Hey everyone! Welcome back to my Let's Play of Near Replicant version 1111. When we last left off, we uh, I think avenged Fira, and uh, I think uh, I think Flashushu in the comments said Fira was like 10 years old. Oh god, that was so sad. Uh, that kind of just broke my heart even further. Um, but yeah, so then we headed out here to the junk heap. And we are going to fight the Shadow and his best friend who's that little kid who lost his mom. And I am prepared for more trauma, so... I just want to say to you guys, thank you so much for your continued support of the series. And let's go uh, have some sad scenes. I'm going to try not to kill it fast so we can have all the dialogue come out. As much as I'd rather not hear it. <sighs> I hope you guys are doing well, by the way. Get ready to cry. I'm kidding. Don't don't cry. I mean, it's okay if you have to, but take care of yourself. Intruder detected. Scanning. Scanning. Exterminate. Looks like we found God, Lord, it's enormous. Intruder detected. Scanning. Scanning. Exterminate. Do it. Beep, beep, beat him good. Look at the shade. That thing is commanding the robot somehow. Aim for the legs. Knock it down. Take out the shade. I don't want to take it out because I want to hear its sad dialogue, Kaine. Eh? Exterminating. Baby, wait. That's enough. You're gonna be destroyed if you keep fighting. Must defend my mission. No, I can't live without you. I don't want to be alone again. Ugh. No, damn it. That's a shade. It's a shade. <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. Be the inside. Okay, so that's the point where she said that. Okay. I remember her doing that. Transform. Watch for falling debris. Look out. Baby, what are you doing? Escape. 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 Go. See the world. You can stop now. You've done enough. Must protect. Must fight. Oh, shit. Excuse me, BB. Where do you think you're going? Don't kill it, Kaine. Stop. BB's my best friend in the whole world. Stop hurting him. Oops. I didn't do it. It was Kaine or a meal. I 
Man, I stopped beating up the kid. I'm sorry, I'm not strong enough. I I wanted to be with you forever. Example of humanity. Hey, come on. That's enough. <laughs> I did it! Now that this goddamn thing is dead, I can forage wherever I want. Just wait, you goddamn freak! Now I can make all kinds of powerful weapons! Just leave it to me. Leave it all to me! <laughs> Look, we get it, okay? Really? Ah, I'm not okay. I was kind of be like, yo, uh, it's just a kid. Then again, you can't show vulnerability. Hatred and madness will never heal a wounded heart. Maybe it's just all he's capable of right now. Revenge is a fool's errand. Yeah, I know. Do you, though? Oh, the law of robotics. Yay. No, I was gonna say, I, I mean, I guess kind of can't, like, show vulnerability, right? Otherwise, freaking, uh... They just showed his name and I already forgot. Tyran? Is that Tyran? T Tyranny? One of the two. His name? Uh, he'll like freaking take over her body, so. It's a rough Popola spot. said we might be able to find something in the Forest of Myth. You will forgive me if I seem less than enthusiastic about such a trip. What, you mean you didn't love having your life narrated by some weird, strangely omniscient narrator? We get to go learn about a sad tree, which was already sad enough the first time. Can't wait for it this time. Ah. That was the first one, like, where you learned enough about the tree's perspective, like the shade's perspective, that you felt bad. And now that we're seeing more of the shade's perspective, I'm just gonna feel worse. Like, I'm just preparing myself to feel like a trash bag after killing that tree. I get to narrate again, which is a lot of fun. I love doing voices and reading. Like reading books out loud to kids. Like I love doing that. I'm not calling you guys kids, but I'm just saying I love reading out loud. You know, I've been thinking. This shit's been whack, yo. Why was a shade hanging out with a machine? It appeared the creature was actually issuing orders to that mechanical minion. Do you think the shade had a reason for what it did? Actually... <sighs> Look, it doesn't matter what a Shade is or isn't thinking. All that matters is that we kill every last one of them. I just want Emil to be like, including us? Right. Sure. The idea of a Shade trying to protect a robot is goddamn absurd. Still, you guys should be careful. What do you mean? If the Shade inside me ever takes over, I'm probably going to attack you. Girl, that's already happened. That's not gonna happen. You are no shade. Yo, it already happened. What are you talking about? 
The lad is correct. You are many things, hussy, but a shade is not one of them. Is this a new scene? I think it is, right? Shades, for example, do not come equipped with such foul and scurrilous mouths. How about I cram your face up your own asshole, book? Don't worry, Kaine. If your shade ever takes over, I'll stop you. You will, will you? <sighs> Thanks, Emil. Yeah, with the power of my Kamehameha, I will blow up everything, including the Aerie. <laughs> that was, it's not funny, but you know, it happened. All right, off to the forest of myth. Bam, bitch. Doo, 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 doo. Always on the lookout for words I miss, potentially. Oh, yeah, Ulu. Thought it said Uwu at first, and I was like, ooh, unfortunate. Leather gloves. I don't know if I've ever gotten that drop before. Interesting. Let's take a moment to chill and, you know, fight our way there, just in case, you know? We haven't leveled up in a while. And we're not going to, as it would seem. Since the enemies don't scale, I mean, it makes sense, because we're not getting any more EXP than we did the first time around, you know what I mean? So, I don't expect us to level up that often. Or maybe even at all. And so we get to some new, like, scaled up bosses, but. <laughs> Alright, hello. Come over. Hey! I'm gonna say come over here and, like, just a singular noise left my mouth. It wasn't even a word. There's the shade on this bridge, though, is there at some point? Maybe not yet. I don't remember. It hasn't been that long. I know, I already forgot. It's the story of my life. Alright. Uh. Going the right way? Yeah. Yeah. Forest of Myth! Thor is the myth. Come here, friend. Remember when we died to this thing? Now I can kill it in like three seconds. It's crazy. You know? Progress. That's the best part about an RPG is that you just really feel the progress. Usually. I mean, some of them you don't, but most of them. I think that's part of why I like them so much because it's really a, a growth experience in terms of like you know, your strength and the characters and their maturity and stuff. And I think it's really nice. I think it shows sort of, I don't know. I like progress. It's one of those things. Oh my gosh, sorry, I was just yawning. I just drank a whole cup of coffee though, so I don't know why I'm yawning, but... home of that blasted dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. I hear you. Well, prepare yourself, vicey boy, because we're doing it. All right. Uh, la 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 la. Hello, mayor man. Sap. All right. What's up? Oh, hello. How are things? You want to know if anything unusual is happening? Well, I have been feeling a rather strange presence whenever I visit the Divine Tree. He sounds like an elderly Mickey Mouse. Is that just me? <laughs> the Divine Tree? It's a legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Did you investigate the cause of this presence? Not really, no. And why not? Well... You're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prey. <sighs> and why is that? I don't know. Mm. It's just how things have always been. I don't know. Weird. All right. Sorry, I got a message on my phone. That's why it took me a minute to uh, press the X button a couple of those times. My bad. I'm focused. Hello. We are the grass. Oh. The trees. The woods. I think we can understand the voice better this time, because last time it was really creepy. It was like, I don't know, it's your grass. And I was like, oh, no, thank you. Hmm. 
Why do we seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately? You should talk, Vice. <laughs> As if Grimoire Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. Hang on. I don't think it's done. Is the dark entity that governs all memories. May the words form themselves to your liking. Does that mean it'll tell us what we want to know? That'd be nice. <clears throat> Story time, boys and girls. Black, pure darkness, painted over everything. Words, scattered here and there across the blackness. Kind words, difficult words, amorous words, all sparkling in the dark like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong, whispered the tree in the voice of wind through the leaves. This is not how it was supposed to be. The plan has failed. Once long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was its task, its function, its purpose. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collected the memories of mankind. This was no accident. Emotions were as much a part of the tree as roots and bark. Memories collected like dew on the thick green leaves of the tree. And once they had formed a web that spanned the entire, the entire world, Jesus, words collapsed into sunlight before passing through the leaves and into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words joined together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light, and the light coalesced into stars. Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my memory. A child is here, brought low by disease. He is far too young to have suffered so. Thin beyond words, the boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached sheets upon which he lies. His parents no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. The doctors have long since surrendered his fate to the gods. The boy, too, has abandoned hope. Strange emotions, weariness, hatred, swell within the dark recesses of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates in his body, but no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, but now his pain is so great that there's little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings the boy comfort, a healthy young girl with tanned skin and deep brown eyes. She is a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. Her very presence is a comfort to him. But he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. Soon, this loathing eats away at what joy he receives from the girl's visits. The girl will stop coming. He knows this. His every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. He thinks that if he could talk to her, he could tell her of his feelings. This might not be so. But this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores it within itself. Etched upon it is a single word. Envy. Look at my memory. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast with red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. When she strikes it with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. But then the white smoke clears, a new enemy arises. And another. And another. The warrior knows that her struggle is folly, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug-addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. Perhaps the child only exists in her head, the dying remnants of a powerful dream. She does not know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go. Some flee in terror, some are eaten. She began the fight with 23 companions, but most are gone now. The warrior's body shudders. She does not understand why at first. By the time she hears the fierce, low sound, the arena is already enclosed in darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for as long as she can remember. Covered in blood and dirt, the warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has been stored for a long time. It is etched with a single word. Loss. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. Ah, that memory has been lost. A shame. It was a favorite of mine. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw that its carefully labeled memories were beginning to dwindle. 
Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seemed ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. It did, however, have the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memories it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit, a hollow place where life had once flourished. The tree had lost its purpose. There was nothing to be done but sift through the remaining memories, littering the ground under its branches. This is why the tree was pleased when the young man and his companion entered the room. Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room Dark Celia had entered was almost completely empty. All he could see was it were a few crystals scattered haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, Dark Celia suddenly saw a familiar sight. It was the Forest of Myth, its villagers prisoners of their own dreams. I apologize, the tree thought. That is all that remains. As Dark Celia stared at the jewel, bewildered, a voice suddenly called out from the depths of his mind. The voice implored them to listen. It was an order. Following it was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized that they must listen. They must listen. Look there! A small, shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It appeared to be a shade. The shade grasped several jewels in his hand. More jewels tumbled out of its mouth like shards of broken teeth, sights and sounds tinkling from each one before vanishing forever. The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. The shade appears to be consuming the memories. These things eat memories? The tree extended a branch toward Dark Celia. Without a second thought, Dark Celia brought his blade down on the shade, tearing its stomach wide. Jewels burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. Look, thought the tree, there is the conviction memory I had lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. Yes, this is good. The tree opened its mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude had caused the tree to forget certain things. Rather than be upset, it greeted the development with good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of speech, the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. Ahem, I, I implore. <clears throat> it spat out a glimmering green jewel. Hmm, one more time. I implore you. There we are. What was the color of the lost envy? The girl's eyes were brown. It spoke. The shade has intelligence and emotion. Who cares? Dark Celia brushed Vice's common aside as the sword sliced through the Shade's right arm. The Shade extended its remaining arm to Dark Celia. I must touch him. I must make contact. The moment its fingers brushed against Dark Celia, the tree felt a warm sensation begin to burn. Something hot coursed through its fingers, up its arm, and out to its entire body. It was emotion, more than the entity had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One thousand years alone, one thousand years in quiet contemplation. The tree felt like it was going to break apart. For long centuries, the tree had been alone, its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New, powerful emotions began to take hold, causing its heart to lighten. This was more than the simple emotions it had been designed to feel. It was the beginnings of a soul. And the young man was the key. This was the promise made long ago. This was how it would be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain, a new and unpleasant sensation. But the time was not yet ripe. I implore you, how many were lost by the warrior who fought the red-eyed beasts? Ah, uh, her daughter in 23. Okay, riddle time is over. I'm gonna kill this stupid shade once and for all. Something round and shiny fell from the open stomach and clattered to the floor. The key! Oh, the key! cried the book. Secure the key! The man's sword slowed. Can't say that sentence. Timing had to dilate around them, stretching and slowing. Time is essential. The next word must be heard. The words exploded. It became difficult to discern their meaning. The pool of memories began to crack as infinite blackness burrowed its way into the wall. This world is falling apart! Darts oh, how can a world of letters... I implore... 
most important thing. World. Fiona! The light was complete. The memories disappeared. The tree's identity began to dissolve. As the letter slowly faded, Dark Cilia was drawn back to the real world. And the tree was satisfied. Ugh! Poor tree. What in the... I never realized shades were capable of rational thought. I don't care if they can tap dance and play the fiddle. I just want to kill him without all this hassle. With the tree defeated, we no longer have to worry about being buried in its world of letters. Unless, of course, time itself begins to rewind. Hmm. Ah, memory tree. There it is. All right. Ooh, man. Oh, box. Ah. Uh, I don't need that. Okie dokie. Maybe Popol has found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Very well. Very well. Alright, let me save. Bop. Okay, so I'm gonna call an episode here, and uh, you know, it's a good spot to end. 26 minutes, pretty good. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Next time we'll continue off, we'll go talk to Popola and continue on with uh, finishing this ending, probably. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe, whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.